safely navigating a ship through fog, the darkness of night, and in the ocean's choppy waters is a hard job and requires a lot of skill and high-tech equipment. But sometimes, whether caused by human error or by mechanical failure, things do go wrong. So here are the top 15 biggest ship collisions and mistakes. Number 15. Grand Rodosi It was 2.49 in the afternoon in October 2010, and all was quiet and well in Port Lincoln in South Australia. The Australian fishing vessel Apollo S was moored at the dock after a good morning of fishing. But at 2.50, the situation quickly became chaotic when the partially loaded bulk carrier Grand Rodosi came barreling through the dock and collided with the Apollo S. Well, it ran over it more than collided with it, seeing as how there was a significant difference in size and weight that favored the Grand Rodosi. Luckily for everyone, the Apollo S was unmanned at the time, but it was totally crushed against the wharf and sank shortly after the incident, and the Grand Rodosi managed to walk or sail away from the scene with just a few small holes in the bow shell plating. It turns out, though, that the chief engineer on board the Grand Rodosi didn't allow enough time for the running engine to stop, so when fuel was introduced into the engine to keep it going full steam ahead, despite orders from above, it was the type of mistake that no one realizes until it's a little too late. Number 14. The Crimson Polaris In August of 2021, the Crimson Polaris was just another cargo ship making a routine trip off the coast of Japan. It was coming back from Thailand carrying over 48,000 tons of wood chips and ran aground. However, it managed to get to its destination in one piece. But the Crimson Polaris had sustained a lot more damage than anyone had perceived, because just two days later the cargo ship split in two again along the coast of Japan. The vessel immediately began spilling oil that created a trail almost 15 miles long and a half a mile wide. One half of the ship managed to stay more or less upright, but the other half took a nosedive into the water. The subsequent environmental impact of the mishap is unclear, but in a silver lining to the situation, all 21 crew members were rescued when three patrol boats showed up on the scene, and they all managed to walk away from the shipwreck unscathed. The oil cleanup had to happen overnight to avoid any future ship collisions that could have ended up on this list. Number 13. MV Shonen Maru 2 The Sea Shepherd Conservation Society is a direct action organization with eco-friendly goals that oftentimes extends into the world's oceans, and it's not uncommon for them to be part of an altercation or two while out on the water. And so in late 2009, they ran into a little trouble with a Japanese whaling boat MB Shonen Maru 2. The story says that the Shonen Maru 2 had started to pursue the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society's vessel, the MY Addy Gill, and start spraying them with their water cannons. Things took a turn for the worse, though, when the two vessels finally collided, which ended the conflict in the ocean quickly. But the Addy Gill is a wave piercing trimaran, and it was significantly smaller than the opposing vessel, which is why things didn't pan out too well for it. Everyone on board the Shonen Maru 2 was all right, and their vessel was fine outside of some chipped paint. But one crew member aboard the Addy Gill suffered from broken ribs, and the vessel sank shortly thereafter. Lucky for them, though, their friends were on two other vessels nearby and were able to get them out of there safely. But of course, both sides blame the other for miscalculating maneuvers. Number 12. Staten Island Ferry any New Yorker has spent a hot summer day on the Staten Island Ferry and waved hello to the Statue of Liberty with one hand and held Italian ice in the other. That experience alone is a New York staple, but the ship made one October trip that turned out to be deadly. The 310-foot ferry crashed at full speed into the concrete maintenance pier with a boat full of passengers at the St. George Terminal in Upper New York Bay. Eleven people lost their lives in the accident and another 70 were injured. Unfortunately, all of this was attributed to human error, as the man piloting the vessel was under the influence of some strong painkillers, and the New York City ferry director failed to enforce the city's rule that requires two pilots in the wheelhouse during docking. So the pilot was both impaired and alone. The trip was only 25 minutes, and the fact that the deadly accident happened at the very end of the trip only made everyone involved more infuriated. The fact that there were heavy winds and even choppier water conditions only made things worse for the pilot who couldn't hold it together that day. Couple that with the fact that most of the passengers were crowding the front of the vessel to be ready to disembark, and you have a recipe for disaster. 
Many victims were trapped under the piles of metal, glass, and wood, and many others just jumped overboard. The Staten Island Ferry also sustained significant damage to the bulkheads, the support frames, and the support columns along the side. This was an unfortunate mistake that could have been completely avoided, and everyone at fault was charged with criminal offenses. Number 11, Lama Island Ferry. It's one thing when a ship crashes and there are only a dozen people on board, because that means there's less of a chance of being any serious injuries or casualties. But as we've seen already, when a passenger ferry is involved, things have a tendency to become a little more serious, which is the case with Hong Kong's Lama Island Ferry in 2012. At the time of the incident, the Lama Ferry was carrying the employees of an electrical company and their family members, taking them to see some holiday fireworks. But the ferry was on a similar trajectory as another passenger vessel, the Hong Kong and Kowloon Ferry. The vessels came a little too close for comfort, and the Hong Kong and Kowloon Ferry crashed straight into the Lama Island Ferry's port side. The latter vessel's watertight compartments ruptured, and they quickly began to take on water, capsizing shortly after the crash. The ferry went down so quickly that 100 passengers were thrown into the water without enough time to grab a life jacket. But then there were the people who were not fortunate enough to jump ship in time and were still inside when the ship went down. With only the bow sticking out of the water in the end, the collision left 39 people dead, 92 people injured, and the captain of the Lama Island Ferry was convicted of 29 counts of manslaughter. Number 10, BC Ferry. Have you ever seen the movie Speed 2? Remember at the end when the CGI cruise ship drives straight into the terminal and plows through the town? Well, that movie came out in 1997 and became a horrific reality in Vancouver in 2005 when the 7,700-ton BC Ferry completely missed their terminal and plowed through the marina full of dozens of boats one morning. It was a massive ship and happened in a relatively populated area, so there were plenty of witnesses who were able to see the incident unfold. They all said one thing, that when they expected the boat to come to a stop, it just kept coming as it blasted its horn to warn everybody below. Luckily, most people ran, and thankfully for the 544 people on board, everyone was okay. There were no casualties and no injuries as the boat was moving slow enough, but not slow enough to avoid any property damage in the marina. It's likely that the incident was caused by an electrical failure within the vessel, and the crew knew a crash was imminent and were able to warn the passengers to brace themselves for impact. After the crash, divers went into the water to search for any bodies and came up empty, and no missing persons were reported. The BC Ferry incident could have been a lot worse. Number 9. MSC Opera. There's nothing better than hanging out on a boat, sailing the gorgeous waters of the Guidecca Canal in Venice, Italy. You're laying on the deck with a drink in hand, soaking up both the sun and the views. But you see a cruise ship in the distance and think to yourself, oh wow, nice. But then the cruise ship starts getting closer and closer, bigger and bigger. And then it gets so close that it hits your boat before you know it. The MSC Opera was having some technical difficulties early one morning in 2019 and crashed into a tourist boat as it attempted to maneuver itself into the Venice cruise terminals for mooring. It was being brought in by tugboats and managed to collide with the dock as well. It was such a jarring hit that seven people fell from the smaller boat and left five passengers injured. The MSC Opera was quickly evacuated, but as you can imagine, when a giant boat hits a tiny one, everyone was all right, thankfully. But the hull of the smaller riverboat took on substantial damage, and the incident even ignited cries to put restrictions on some of these massive cruise ships. Number 8. Shinyo Sawako and Lu Rongyu, 2177. Back in 2008, the Chinese fishing boat Lu Rongyu, 2177, had a nasty collision with the Hong Kong ship freighter Shinyo Sawako in the East China Sea between Kyushu and Amami Island. The cause of the collision remains unknown, but it was so bad that the Lu Rongyu 2177 sank almost immediately. The Japanese Coast Guard came to the scene as soon as they could, but much of the damage had already been done. Eventually, two more Chinese vessels came to help with the rescue and the recovery efforts, but in the end, only two out of the 18 crew members of the fishing boat were rescued. The incident is a pretty unfortunate reminder that the high seas are often incredibly treacherous. Keeping your own vessel safe and sound when it's out there alone is one thing, but it becomes a whole other beast when there are sometimes bigger vessels thrown into the mix. Number 7. USS John McCain Even though they may be made up of some of the best and brightest, the world's navies aren't immune to making mistakes that cause ship collisions. 
and that's especially the case when it comes to the USS John McCain. In August of 2017, the USS John McCain, a Navy destroyer, collided with a Singapore merchant ship in the Pacific Ocean. The situation ended with 10 sailors missing and another five injured, and an obvious investigation. The collision was attributed to a maybe too complex touchscreen system used for throttle and control, and the subsequent improper training in operating these systems. This meant that the crew of the USS John McCain lost control of the vessel just before it crossed paths with the Singaporean ship in the Singapore Strait. The USS John McCain attempted evasive maneuvers, but it was too little too late. And what makes the situation worse is that it was completely unavoidable. The higher-ups in the US Navy quickly responded, mandating to revert the Navy destroyers back to the mechanical throttle controllers that everyone was already used to. Number six, USS Fitzgerald. The USS John McCain wasn't the only naval mishap to happen in 2017. In fact, another one occurred within just two months of that collision. While the USS Fitzgerald, another destroyer-class vessel, was out sailing around the seas near Japan, she collided with the ACX Crystal, a Filipino container ship. The ACX measures about 40,000 tons, so you can imagine how big that collision was. The incident happened around 1.30 in the morning, so just about all 300 crew members aboard the Fitzgerald were asleep. Talk about a rude awakening. The starboard side of the destroyer was seriously damaged and the container ship's bow went right through the hull of the Fitzgerald below the waterline, which caused the machinery space to flood along with two crew berthing spaces and the ever important radio room. Even the captain's cabin was crushed. But more tragically, seven crew members drowned on board. The investigation was thorough and as you'd expect and went on for two years before concluding two vessels collided because of incomplete radar information on board the USS Fitzgerald and a distraction. Subsequently, the two senior officers and their senior enlisted sailors in charge at the time were relieved of their duties, and a dozen other sailors were disciplined. Number 5. USS Lake Champlain The USS Lake Champlain was given its name to honor the Battle of Lake Champlain, which took place during the War of 1812. So with a name like that, you would expect this missile cruiser to be absolutely infallible. Well, think again, because if it's on this list, then it must have been involved in a pretty big collision. On May 19th of 2017, that's exactly what happened. While doing some routine operations in the international waters off the Asian continent, the USS Lake Champlain was hit by a 70-foot-long South Korean fishing vessel on their port side. Luckily, though, no lives were lost, and everyone involved was able to walk away unharmed. But these are still some big boats, so there was plenty of damage to go around during the incident. This is another classic case of total lack of foresight on someone's part. The Navy ship had picked up the fishing vessel on their radar and tried contacting them, but their efforts were in vain seeing as how the fishing boat didn't have a radio. So when Lake Champlain didn't get a response, they sounded their emergency horn, which again the fishing boat didn't respond to. And the rest, as they say, is history. Number four. MSC Napoli. Piloting a cargo ship is no easy task. They're flat out huge and obviously hauling tons and tons of cargo. And you've got to be on your toes when navigating the seven seas with these guys. But accidents can still happen and you have to be able to adapt at the drop of a hat. In January of 2007, the MSC Napoli, a 900 foot cargo ship, had a crack in the hull after going through some pretty bad weather while up the English Channel on a trip from Belgium to Portugal. There was so much water that once the crew learned what was going on, they needed to evacuate, or rather abandon ship, immediately. All 26 crew members made it out of there safely enough, but they left the MSC Napoli to the sea. Rescue teams and tugboats eventually showed up after an SOS signal. But the biggest fear here now was the ship would not only sink, but break apart. It is important to avoid something like that at all costs. The MSC Napoli was eventually beached in Lime Bay off the coast of Branscombe, the rest of the cargo and fuel had to be removed, and in July, almost six months after the incident, the MSC Napoli was brought back out to sea, but the damage to the vessel was so bad that she needed to be beached again just three days later. Eventually, the ship was blown apart into three sections, removed and retired. All in all, this was a 924-day affair. Number three, Rena. The Rena is a 735-foot container ship that was the victim of human error back in October of 2011 in the New Zealand Bay of Plenty. The ship was traveling at a speed of around 17 knots on its way towards Tauranga. But if you know anything about the Bay of Plenty, you'll know that it's also home to the Astrolab Reef. And ships and reefs do not mix. 
The Rena struck the reef and was stuck there for quite some time, try a few months. During that period, however, the Rena was exposed to the elements that quickly began to erode the boat as she soon started to break apart. The situation quickly became an environmental issue, so the next order of business was getting the vessel out of there and saving the reef. Sailors did their best to salvage the Rena, but she eventually split in January of 2012. The only thing left to do was to dismantle the wreck right there on the reef. The results were pretty rough. 220 tons of heavy fuel oil were released into the water and the reef. The Prime Minister of New Zealand deemed the wreck to be the worst maritime disaster in the country's history. All of this could have been and should have been avoided if Rena's second officer hadn't deviated from the course in order to meet their deadline. The change, of course, took the ship right over the reef, which no one knew was there until the ship came to a grinding halt. Number 2. MOL Comfort One of the biggest and worst shipping mistakes and one of the worst shipping container disasters in recent history has got to be the incident with the MOL Comfort in 2013. While making a trip along the Indian Ocean and carrying well over 4,000 containers, the ship broke in two. The MOL Comfort has suffered a hull girder fracture, comprising the hull integrity. Investigators were never able to figure out exactly why this happened. All crew members managed to abandon ship safely, and both halves of the newly split vessel somehow stayed afloat. But the stern sank after 10 days, taking about 4,000 containers with it. Rescue and salvage teams were able to get a tow line attached to the bow of the ship, but it caught fire and sank weeks later. The incident with the MOL Comfort was so bad that rules and guidelines were called into question, with new rules being adopted regarding the hull girder strength of container ships of that size. Number 1. The Ever Given The final entry on our list of ship collisions and mistakes is also the most recent. The Ever Given is a massive 1,300-foot container ship that found itself aground in the Suez Canal on March 23, 2021, blocking one of the most important trade routes in the world for almost a week. The Ever Given ran aground diagonally after high winds and a dust storm caused it to lose its ability to steer which caused the hull to deviate from the waterway and hit the bottom of the canal. Intense investigations declared that human error was attributed to the incident as well. The bow was wedged in one back and the stern was touching the other, creating a giant wall that the 15 other vessels behind it wouldn't be getting through anytime soon. Eventually, the number of vessels involved in the traffic jam surpassed 200. Eight tugboats were brought in to dry and refloat the Ever Given while an excavator worked to remove the sand away from the ship's bow, but it wasn't until a high tide that the ship was finally able to move out and move on, at which point it had caused about $900 million in damages. Watch our Waves playlist for more top 15 videos about massive waves. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best wave videos.